tolerancji w systemie. May the Father of mercies, the God of all consolation, be with you and with your spirit. In the words of baptism, Father Paul died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. Let us pray. God of love and kindness, listen favorably to our prayers. Strengthen our belief that your Son, who has risen from the dead, is our hope that your servant, Gordon Paul, will also rise again. We ask this through our Lord Jesus, brother Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated and we are going to be with our goodness. The 
word of the Lord. Thank you. to come when we need to be reconciled to the Lord. 
and he will read them seven us. Doesn't matter how many times we come and we ask for that reconciliation. That's why he suffered for us to reconcile us. Could be many, many times that we need reconciliation. He's willing to give it to us, but I need to ask. He's saying, uh, I want to reconcile you with the Father, but then I need to want to be reconciled. At this time, the grace of God is upon us, is around us, is just dwelling in us. And then, with that grace, we are able to approach Christ, to come to embrace His presence, to know that He loves us in such a way that He was willing to die for us. So Christ did everything to save us. We are saved. We just need to, to trust in Him, to approach Him, and to know that the sound says, even if I am in dark times, I'm not afraid. Why? Because the Lord is right there with us. He's the one guiding us. He's the one helping us in our daily lives. When we have those little things that bother us, those little problems that come to us once in a while, He's there to help us, to strengthen every one of us. And to go through those problems, those suffering, and not be afraid. Because He is walking with us. He is one with us. The only thing that we need to do is to embrace His presence, to trust, and to believe that He will save us. That's what we need to do. And by believing, I mean to follow His commandments. Loving God above everything, loving our brothers and sisters, how we love ourselves. That's what we need to do. So now we are going to continue with the prayer of the faithful, the general intercessions.
tragic, scary, and sudden and unexpected that I had to fly out there. But we have to realize it's good that we're here to honor him. It's good that we meet here as friends and have fellowship. It is good that we have neighbors of Gordon and Angel here. It is good that Gordon's co-workers could come here. It's good that later on we'll talk to students. It's good that all of you have come here with Anna Jo and the Father for this service. So I say to you once again, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We're getting better. Uh, and I'm from the South, that's what we do. Uh, I know most of you don't know me. My name is Chris. Um, if you would please give me 12, 14 minutes of your time, uh, I want to tell you three things about Gordon. And uh, I realize that I'm here in this wonderful, uh, wonderful church, so I'm going to keep it, uh, a lot of the stories low key. <laughs> but if I had to do the, the first thing I want to tell you about is Gordon's life. And if I had to come up with a simple phrase, it would be Gordon's life was not perfect. None of us really are. Um, Gordon's life might be described as complex. Some part of my dear friend's life would be called very tough. Gordon was a child in the 60s. And for those of you who are our age, uh, the 60s were a very complex, tough time. There was a lot of things that were, were first for our parents and that we saw as, hey, this is crazy. Now everybody's wearing a flat top and these guys with long hair. You know, it's, What's all this craziness going on? Gordon and I both had tumultuous childhoods, but for very, very different reasons. And when we met in the 70s, the early 70s, and I know I'm dating us, um, we, we clicked, not because our stories were identical, but because our stories had some of the same pain, had some of the same things to overcome. One of the first things that I, I want to know about Gordon is that he had a car. Now, we live in, we lived in Florida, and you have, like here, you have to pretty much have a car to get to anything if you're out of town. Uh, the problem was that Gordon was not yet of legal driving age. Don't worry, he drove himself to the driver's uh, DMV and got his license. <laughs> Gordon is the kind of guy that you could talk to for five minutes, or you could talk to for five hours. He's also the same kind of guy that you could talk to every day. Or like me, sometimes I didn't talk to him for stretches of six months. Maybe even longer. I, I, Anna Jo and I were talking about that, and we were trying to figure out some of the times when we saw each other or did this. And it's amazing how, how time moves on. But when Gordon and I talked, we talked about virtually everything. We talked about right and wrong. We talked about family issues. We talked about going into the Marines. Gordon went into the Marines right out of high school. He kind of looked at it as a way to possibly gain some money for college. And when he uh, said, when I asked him, well, why on earth would you want to join the Marines? He says, well, they're supposed to be the best. Gordon usually wanted to be the best or not do anything at all. He would always try to be the best. <laughs> we also talked a lot about Anna before we even knew your name. Gordon and I would talk. And as his life progressed, you knew that Gordon had this unusual sense of adventure. Gordon would suddenly decide, hey, I'm going to do this. Why on earth do you want to become a, a car salesman? Why on earth do you want to uh, go off and, and deal poker and, and do these things. So, well, it sounds like fun. Some of the things were even a little crazier, like why on earth would you want to take your new bride to Alaska? It was from the Philippines. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, he was a person who was a little unique. And of course, Gordon had a very, I would call it, dry sense of humor. Some people like this, some people maybe not so much. But Gordon's life 
really had senses of adventure, senses of difference. Whether you loved him or hated him, it was unique. And that kind of brings me to my second topic about friendship. Being friends sometimes is hard. Now, my test of saying whether I have a friend or a, a true friend, and I said with Gordon, if you can talk to that person for a minute or two minutes or an hour or two hours, and it seems like the same, you might have a friend. If you can talk to that person every day, you might have a friend. If you can take all those things and not talk to that person for a year, but then you pick up right where you left off, you know you have a true friend. Gordon was never ashamed of his opinions. This could get him in a little bit of trouble at times. Gordon would tell the truth as he believed it, as he researched it. He was a very red individual. He would often dig up facts and stuff, and me being the nerd, uh, geek, sciencey type, uh, we would often have a lot of talks about this kind of stuff. The big thing with Gordon that not everybody realized, you could disagree with Gordon, but he could still respect you. And sadly, in our world today, we have too many things where people disagree on anything and they don't respect each other. Maybe the world needs to get back to that a little bit. Just Chris's opinion. But if you spoke to Gordon calmly and rationally, whether he was for or against you in your argument, he would respond to you calmly and rationally. But if you got loud and boisterous, if you got opinionated and said that your way is the only way and he had evidence to prove otherwise, it would be just as confrontational. He was very reflexive, is I guess a, a good word to use. But all of this, really none of it really matters. Because it really comes down to the last thing I want to talk about. In English, it is a single word called love. Now, for those of you who know, know Anagel from the Philippines, they actually have many words for love. And I've had the good fortune to travel a lot internationally, a whole lot, and have somebody else pay for it. It was not vacation, trust me. But you learn very quickly that this where we have an English love is very limited. We have to put all those qualifiers at the end of it. But other languages would have so many more words for love than just romantic love that we talked about. And Joe, I know, I know with all my heart that Gordon loved you. And I am just as convinced that you loved him. Gordon loved his friends. Now, it's not the same love as Angel's. It's that, that brotherly love, that love of, of kinship, of fellowship. But if you knew him, you hung out with him, this is a guy I could go out and have some time with. Or maybe the total opposite, but you knew where he stood. Gordon loved his students. Sometimes though, that came in the form of tough love. Love isn't always the one that we think about in English. You can still love someone. <coughs> so I'm going to leave you with this final thought. I believe it is, it is good that I knew Gordon for more than 40 years. It brings a unique perspective of how you feel <coughs> man. I believe it is good that Gordon went into teaching. Because throughout our tumultuous childhoods and throughout sometimes our tumultuous uh, middle-aged or early years, he finally found something that gave him a purpose and a passion more than just making a living. I believe it is good that Gordon often worked with kids who were troubled. Many of the schools he worked at, he was assigned as tough as kids, both for physical impairments and vision, and other issues. I believe it worked so well because he had a little bit of perspective and knowing some of the challenges that they faced because he faced them. 
Gordon's life was not perfect, and it was complex, and sometimes it was very tough. I believe it is good that Gordon met Angel and fell in love. So again, while it's tragic that he's gone, I will miss my friend. I know that his friends will miss him too. I know that his co-workers will miss him. I know his principal will miss him because now he has to find someone to replace him. <laughs> I know his family, even though they could not be here today, and the man he called Uncle Ben, who just happens to be my father, who helped raise him. He wanted to be here, but I know it's, it's tragic and we all miss him. But it is really good that we have this here today. It is good that we honor him, and I thank each and every one of you for helping set this up and supporting Anna Jo in this very serious time of need. So thank you so much, and I say to you one last time, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Better. Thank you. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Saints of God, come to his aid, hasten to meet him, angel of the Lord, receive his soul, and present him to God, the Most High. May Christ who told you take it to himself. May angel lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Eternal rest run unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Gordon Paul, in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon him in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may God the Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and remember you forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for coming, and on behalf of Evangel and um, Garrington High School, we'd like you to invite you back for some fellowship at the Wilson Purpose Room.